Hey Starfinders, I'm David, the Digital Dungeon Master, and in this particular video, we are going to be taking a look at the Lashenta's race in the Starfinder Core rulebook. Idealized by many other humanoid races and gifted with innate psychic abilities, Lashenta's are at once consummate scholars and enlightened warriors, naturally divided into two specialized sub-races, the Karasha and the Damaya. To survive on the predator-rich world of Castreval, the telepathic humanoids called Lashentas evolved adaptive genetics that allow children to develop into one of two subspecies, depending on the stresses they endure at puberty. Either the tall, intellectual, and adaptable Damaya, who make up most of the race's political leaders and ambassadors, or the short, burly, yet headstrong Karasha, who excel as warriors and explorers. Both feature short forehead antennae, that focus their natural telepathy, as well as colorful swirls and rays markings on their faces unique to each individual. Due to natural pheromones and Lashenta's almost perfect physical symmetry, most humanoid races find Lashenta's of both subspecies subconsciously and sometimes unnervingly attractive. Hubba hubba. Both clades of the species bear the same genetics, allowing them to intermarry and have children. While all Lashenta children inherit complexions and certain distinguishing features from their parents, their subspecies is not one of them. Through psychic ritual and force of will techniques applied at puberty, modern Lashentas have mastered the ability to determine what subspecies a child will grow into, activating certain epigenetics and shutting down others. Lashentas form the most prominent race on Castreval and have long been organized into interdependent city-states for protection against the planet's many apex predators. At the same time, thanks to their large number of magical portals, Lashentas regularly ventured to other worlds even before the advent of space travel, and they have developed particularly close bonds with societies on Akaton. Though Lashenta societies usually characterize themselves as meritocracies, their leaders have traditionally been women and are usually the Maya, except in times of war. Both the Maya and Karasha Lashentas see education as one of the highest callings, making Lashenta scholars renowned across the entire solar system. Military service is also valued, since Castrophil's dangerous ecosystem and lack of overarching governments mean the settlements need warriors to protect them from the jungle monsters. Of these soldiers, the most iconic are the traditional Shadalashu cavalry, lightly armored riders who form telepathic bonds with and take their name from their Saurian mounts. On the whole, Lashenta's focus on self-improvement, honor, and communal defense that leads them toward good alignments, with the Maya tending to be more lawful and the Karasha more chaotic. Lashenta's believe that every culture has something to teach, and thanks to the legendary prowess of Lashenta diplomats, most other races respect them and consider them allies, or at least reasonable associates. Vesk admire their warriors, androids and Kasathas value their logic and learning, and humans respect their scholarship but risk embarrassing themselves trying to deal with the Lashenta's disconcerting attractiveness. Sheerans are the main exception to this pattern of mutual respect, though Lashenta's millennia of warfare with the insectile Formians has finally ended, but many of the Lashentas are still uncomfortable interacting with similar races and worry that the bugs may one day unite against them. When a Lashenta leaves home, it's often to grow in knowledge, prowess, or simple enlightenment. Experience is the best teacher to the Lashenta, and the thrill of discovery means that a Lashenta adventurer is as likely to be drawn to a new world by a rumor of lost lore as by the promise of wealth. Lashenta adventurers are most frequently envoys, technomancers, and mechanics, but soldiers and operatives are also common. Now the Lashenta, they are dimorphic, and there are two different sub-races that you can choose from. Now both of these sub-races, the Karasha and the Damaya, are going to get four hit points. Now the ability scores are going to work differently for each sub-race, but both sub-races, both the Karasha and the Damaya, will get a plus two 
to your Charisma Ability score. Now the Karasha will also get a plus two to Strength and a minus two to Wisdom Ability scores, while the Demaya will get a plus two to Intelligence and a minus two to Constitution Ability scores. Now a couple of good themes and class combinations for your Lushanta will depend on the sub race that you're gonna be playing. Now, if you're gonna go with the Karasha, which gets bonuses for Charisma and Strength, then you wanna go with something like the Solarion. The Charisma will help you with your Stellar Revelations, and the Strength will help you with your Melee and Bulk Carrying Capacity. The Wisdom really won't affect you. Now, however, if you need any kind of themes to bump up your defenses, then go with something dex-based like the Ace Pilot or maybe the Outlaw. Or if you want some more stamina points, then you can go with the Spacefarer or the Bounty Hunter. Or if you need a little bit more strength, then consider going with the Mercenary. Now, another pretty nice choice for the Karathas would also be the Envoy. Now, you could take advantage of that Charisma bonus, and it will help you with your Envoy improvisations. Now, the Strength, it could help you a little bit for melee, or maybe a little bit more bulk carrying capacity, uh, but the Wisdom really won't affect you too much. Now, the Charisma is also going to help you with any kind of Charisma-based checks that you make, whether it be Bluff, Diplomacy, or maybe Disguise. Now, you can also help get some more defenses. You could go with a dex-based theme, which is the Ace Pilot or the Outlaw. If you need a little bit more stamina points to your stamina pool, go with something con-based, the Spacefarer, or maybe the Bounty Hunter. Or if you want something charisma-based, just go with the Icon or the Zeno Seeker. Now, you can also take advantage of that plus two to your strength ability score by playing a soldier. Now, the wisdom and the charisma really aren't going to affect you, but the strength will help you, especially if you're going to go more of a melee based type of soldier. And you can choose some themes depending if you need some armor bonuses. You could go with like a dex based ace pilot. If you need any kind of constitution, then you could go ahead with like a bounty hunter or spacefarer. Or if you want more strength, Strength, then just go with the mercenary. Now, if you decide to play the Demaya sub race for the Lashenta, you can play a Solarion, but take into consideration the Demaya gets a plus two to intelligence compared to the Karasha gets the plus two to strength. So intelligence wouldn't probably be the best choice. Now the Envoy for the Demaya would be good as well because the intelligence is gonna help you with more skill checks. And if you wanna go with the mechanic, that is an intelligence-based class as well, and that will help you with all of your different science checks. It will also help you for your intelligence-based mechanical tricks, and the constitution may hurt you a little bit at minus two, but you could also pick up a spacefarer or bounty hunter theme to boost that back up by one. So what type of racial features are the Karasha and the Damaya going to get? Well, both of these sub races are considered a medium sized creature and both will also get 30 feet of movement per round. Next, you're going to get Lashunta Magic. This is where you're going to be able to cast three spells either at will or once a day. So the two at will spells are Days and Psychokinetic Hand. Days is where you can actually put the Days condition on a creature, and Psychokinetic Hand is where you can manipulate items, pick them up, move them around, as long as these items are within 10 pounds. And like I said, both Days and Psychokinetic Hand, they're at will spells, and you can cast them any amount of times that you want to, which is actually really nice. And another great thing about this is you can be a soldier or you can be an operative. You can be any kind of like melee or ranged attack character and still cast these spells. You don't have to be a mystic or a technomancer. Now, your one use per day spell is going to be Detect Thoughts. This is where you're going to be able to detect surface thoughts on any creatures that are within a 60 foot cone from where you're standing. Now, the longer that you concentrate and prolong detect thoughts, the more minds that you'll be able to tap into as long as they are within your 60 foot cone. The next racial feature you're going to get is limited telepathy. This is where you are going to be able to communicate 
mentally with a creature, an intelligent creature that is within 30 feet of you. Now, you can carry a conversation with one creature at a time. And if you try to do this with more than one, it's going to be like trying to communicate with multiple creatures at one time. Now, limited telepathy would also work well in group situations. Say if you're trying to sneak up on an encampment of some bandits or something, you could use limited telepathy to communicate with your other party members. It could also help you with some social interactions as well. Maybe an audience with a big corporation, maybe an audience with maybe a ruler of a kingdom. But be careful with using limited telepathy because most other intelligent races that know the Lashinta are going to know that your antennae are going to be able to mentally communicate with others. So I would really be wary of using it. Now, lastly, you are going to get student. Being a Lashunta, you love to learn anything and everything you can. So as a racial feature, this is going to give you a plus two to two ability scores of your choice. So there we are, everybody. That is the Lashunta race from the Starfinder Core rulebook. Now, let me know down in the comments section below what you guys think of the Lashunta race. Do you like the different sub races? I want to know. Also, if you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you did, please do me a huge favor and give me a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. And you can check out all of my other Starfinder, Dungeons & Dragons 5e, and Fantasy Grounds videos here on my YouTube channel. Once again, everybody, my name is David, the Digital Dungeon Master, and until next time, happy gaming and stay safe.